woman was leaning against a streetlight and not moving. The policewoman speculated that it was possible that the woman had leaned against the iron pole to make a phone call while the lightning flashed and thundered last night. So she was struck by lightning and the moment of electrocution caused her body to stiffen. And that's why she was immobilized here. When the police lifted the woman up only to find that the woman's body does not have any burn marks and her cell phone is new and did not install a cell phone card. So the policewoman's death can be basically disproved. But what exactly did she go through before she died to make her body so hard and sculpture-like all night? Later that night, at the roadside bus stop, there was another male deceased. And the woman's death was extremely similar. Both staring, his whole body stiff and fixed posture. The police noticed that the bruises on his back matched the lines of the bench. The bus driver said, he passed by an hour ago and didn't notice a body. However, forensic tests showed that the man had been dead for at least 10 hours, which meant that he had been placed here after he died and that both victims had discolored livers and lungs, with a high probability that they died from asphyxiation. The next morning, once again, a statue of a corpse appeared. The man, who was standing upright, died in the street. The cab driver told police that he had seen the man earlier with his hands up thinking he was going to take a cab, but then he waited and he still didn't move. It was only when he got closer that he realized it was a dead body. During the autopsy, the coroner removed a fixation plate from the man's shoe so he could remain standing. He also had a lot of dead fleas in his hair, which was completely at odds with his clean and tidy suit. The police investigation revealed that the victims were not related, but they all had sleeping pills in their systems, and all died from asphyxiation, and were dressed after death in costumes that did not match their original identities. Subsequently, the forensic pathologist also detected that their bodies all contain varying degrees of carbon monoxide, also including those dead fleas, which means that the murderer must have first used sleeping pills to knock out the victims and then fixed their bodies into the appearance they wanted, and then used carbon monoxide to make them poisoned, made into real-life statues, and placed on the street for people to enjoy. The two old men were made into human sculptures and kept in a fixed position. The modus operandi this time was the same as before, and although there was no relationship between these dead people, the police found a breakthrough. A famous local artist was about to hold a sculpture competition, and one of the people who signed up submitted some of his works online in which the sculptures were in the same poses as those of the dead. The police immediately questioned the artist. The artist said that not long ago, a man brought his sculptures to him to help point out, but the artist will not put these small people in dice, a humiliation after the other side to drive away. Now the police can basically pinpoint this man as the murderer. He was obsessed with art and could not get recognition from others, so he began to be psychopathic. The police found out the murderer's location, based on the IP address he signed up with. The murderer was quickly apprehended, the police also found a classroom and a young boy also immobilized in a position in the underground chamber of his house, which was filled with super concentrated carbon monoxide. Police rushed to turn off the gas switch. Luckily the boy was still alive. In the interrogation room, the murderer blindly told the police that he was trying to prove himself as an artist in such an extreme way that not being recognized is the biggest shame. But he doesn't understand that being good is far more important than the vision of others.